Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will see some very important concepts in JDBC from the interview perspective. So without any further delay, let's start. The first question that we have is what is JDBC? It stands for Java Database Connectivity, which is an API that helps your Java application connect with databases. The database can be Oracle, MySQL or any other database. JDBC provides a standard set of interfaces to connect and execute the SQL queries. Even though now at times uh, we generally do not directly work with JDBC, like we have so many frameworks and ORM tools, which provide us a layer of abstraction. Still, it's better to understand how the things work under the hood. Now let's see the basic steps we need to perform for connecting a Java application to the database using JDBC. In case you want to see the complete hands-on example, please check out the top right corner of your screen for the complete video tutorial. Now the first thing is to load JDBC driver from the jar. So what exactly is that jar? Every database will have their drivers in separate jar files containing the main driver classes and helping classes as well, which provides us the driver manager. To load a particular class in memory, we use class.forName method and load the desired driver class into memory using reflection. So once we have class loaded, then using driver managers get connection method, we will create a connection object. That connection object will help the application and database to communicate with each other. The last component we need to create or get before executing any query is a statement. Statement object can be obtained from connection object. There are three types of statements. One is just simple statement. This is used to create simple SQL statements with no parameters. And then we also have prepared statement and callable statements with their respective features. Till this point, we have everything ready to execute the query. Now using statement, we can execute the query. The query can be in the form of string. It can be select star from a table. Now, depending on the query, it will return the desired data as a response. If the query is insert, update or delete, then it will return the number of affected rows. Otherwise, it will return the requested data from the database. Once we have the data and we processed it, now the last step would be to close the connection object. Because connection object is actual connection from the application to database and we should not keep it open if it is not required. To make sure that connection object is always closed, use try with resources instead of simple try and catch block. Now let's see what is a prepared statement. A prepared statement is used to execute the similar SQL statements repeatedly with higher efficiency. So how does prepared statement basically works? An SQL statement template is created and is sent to the database with some certain values that are left unspecified. Those are called parameters and those will be labeled as a question mark in that template. For example, we have insert into my table and in the values, we do not provide the value, but we provide the question marks. So the application will bind the values to those question mark at later stage. What the database will do, the database parse, compiles and performs some query optimization on the template that has been sent and store the result without executing it. That is why it's also known as pre-compiled statement because the query has been already compiled. Only the values of parameters will be substituted. So at the later time, the application binds the value to the parameters and database execute the statement and return the desired result. Next is what is the use of result set? So whenever we execute an SQL query where we are trying to fetch some data from table or view, the data received will be of type result set. This is a special interface that represents the result of SQL select query. It has methods to retrieve the data which is returned from database like we have has next method that will tell if there are more rows available of the data in the result set or not then we can get it based on the column name or index now let's see another important concept from the performance perspective which is connection pooling suppose there are 10 users connected to your application and they perform some operation which requires connection to the database so the simplest approach will be to create database connection object when any user operation requires it and then close it but if we see the overhead of creating the object and disposing is huge and that can affect the application performance when the number of users increases 
so to overcome this issue the concept of connection pooling was introduced in this already a set of pre initialized database connection objects are maintained so instead of creating a new connection for each database operation application can reuse the connection from pool and once its operation is done that connection object will be returned back to the pool this improves the performance of application now let's see what is a transaction in JDBC. A transaction represents a single unit of work. It can contain one or more statements. With transaction, we can ensure that ACID properties are followed. In JDBC, transactions can be managed using connection object as it provides methods to start, commit and roll back the transactions. Now let's talk about another feature in JDBC using which we can execute any number of statements in one go. Suppose you want to load some data to a database by reading an Excel file. So what you can do in this case is read a row from Excel sheet and create its respective insert query and execute it. Simple, right? Now suppose you have 1 million rows present in that Excel. So if you follow the approach we have just discussed, it will open the database connection 1 million times and then execute one statement every time and close the connection. So how do you think the performance will be for such application? Pretty bad, right? So to improve the performance of such bulk operations, we have a provision in JDBC. Here before executing, we can add multiple statements in a batch and then that batch can be executed in one go. Thus, it will improve the performance of your application. Both statement and prepared statement provide methods to add multiple SQL statements in the batch. Now, the last topic that we will discuss today is provision of auto commit in JDBC. In database, unless we commit, the changes are not permanent. So, JDBC provide that feature where we do not have to explicitly commit our transaction. JDBC will take care of it automatically. Although if we want to stop JDBC doing auto commit and control the commit on our own, that is also possible. We just need to use connection dot set auto commit to false, but by default auto commit will be enabled. That's it for this video. If you think the content was helpful, please give us a like so that it can reach the maximum audience. Thank you so much for watching. Keep learning.